Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Listography. Um, today we are going to be talking about the English post-punk, new wave, and uh, goth rock pioneers, The Cure. Uh, they also happen to write um, some of the best pop songs of the 80s. Right, they've got 13 albums all together, so uh, let's get started. Um, number 13 at the bottom of my list is from the year 2000, the album Blood Flowers. Uh, this is not necessarily a bad album. Um, it just doesn't really stand out in any way or have any really standout tracks. It kind of lacks variety. Um, just kind of a, a bland album, never really... Um, never really um, connected with me in any major way. So that's why I have it at the bottom. But it's, it's not really that bad. Um, my favorite song on it, probably Out of This World. All right, number 12, uh, their debut album from 1979, Three Imaginary Boys. Uh, this is a very interesting record, uh, way ahead of its time. Kind of uh, crazy to think that this album came out in the 70s. Uh, it lays a blueprint for bands like Franz Ferdinand, uh, especially uh, songs like Grinding Halt. Um, Cure albums would become much more textured and more tuneful and well recorded down the road. Um, but Three Imaginary Boys shows a band with a tremendous promise at the beginning of their career. Moving on to number 11, um, was the follow-up to Three Imaginary Boys, the album 17 Seconds from 1980. Uh, so this is what uh, some might call the beginning of their gothic phase. Uh, it's a pretty big leap forward from their debut record, uh, especially sonically and in terms of mood and atmosphere. Um, those albums, or those elements alone, are enough to make this album and all of their albums from this period of their career um, very highly regarded among certain fans. Um, but for me, the songs aren't really that melodic or tuneful enough to put it you know, way up near the top of my list. Uh, my favorite songs from 17 Seconds are In Your House and A Forest. All right, at number 10, um, from 2004, it's their self-titled album, The Cure. Uh, this album has some production issues. It was uh, co-produced by Ross Robinson, who is primarily uh, known as a new metal producer. Uh, I think he worked with bands like Korn and some others. Um, as a result, there's some kind of harsh tones on this record. Uh, it's a little bit cold sounding. Um, there are a handful of good songs uh, that save it from being like down at the bottom of my list, but overall, um, it's not one of my favorite. Um, some of the songs that I do like, though, are Lost, Before Three, The End of the World, and Taking Off. At number nine, from 1996, the album Wild Mood Swings. Um, so after really an incredible stretch of, of classic albums, uh, Wild Mood Swings was the first one to kind of miss the mark a little bit. Um, the, the production on this album is pretty harsh. Um, I'm not a big fan of the drums and that really tight snare sound that was so prevalent in the 90s is all over this record. Um, the guitar tones are kind of rough on this record too, um, especially the distorted wah guitar on the song Club America. So this, the standouts on this record are really great though, uh, whereas the standouts on their self-titled record um, just stand out among the other songs on that record. The standouts here hold their own with the best that the band ever wrote. I love the 13th, uh, and the horns on it are, are awesome. I like uh, Mint Car a lot is a fantastic song. Strange Attraction uh, is all right, and Bear ends the album on a, on a pretty high note. So there's some worthwhile material here for sure. Moving on to number eight from 1981, the album Faith. Uh, this was their third record. Um, kind of follows in the steps of 17 Seconds and that it's very gloomy, moody record. Uh, however, the production is even better here than it is on, on its predecessor. Um, the bass on this record especially sounds great. 
um, much more low end than uh, 17 Seconds has. Uh, although I prefer the pop oriented albums that they came out with later in the 80s, um, it's pretty easy to see why this record um, has sort of its own cult following. Um, All Cats Are Grey, The Funeral Party, Primary, and The Drowning Man are uh, my favorite songs. Alright, number seven from 1982, the album that came out right after Faith, it's uh, Pornography. Um, I think I actually prefer the sound of, of Faith, um, but Pornography is a much more varied and interesting album, um, where Faith can be a little repetitious in places. Um, pornography has much more movement to it, and although um, I wouldn't call Pornography a poppy record, it is sort of the very beginning of, of, a, of them hinting at a, a more melodic side to their songwriting. Um, Favorite songs on Pornography are The Hanging Garden, The Figurehead, and A Strange Day. Number six, uh, from 1984, uh, the album The Top. Uh, so this was a transitional record for The Cure, and I think it's probably one of their most overlooked records. Um, their early output has a very devoted fan base, uh, and of course people know the, the big pop albums with big hits that they had following this record. Um, this kind of lands right in between these two well-known eras of the band's uh, career. Um, musically, it was the most advanced and stylistically varied album that they had made to this point, and there are some really great songs on it. Um, my favorites being Bird Mad Girl, Dressing Up, The Caterpillar, and Banana Fish Bones. Um, moving on to number five. Um, this might be a bit of a surprise uh, for a lot of people. Um, I think people will be a little shocked at how high I have this on my list. Um, other lists that I've looked at of Cure Records, most people seem to put this down like the bottom three usually. Um, but I kind of like it a lot. Um, number five, I have 413 Dream from 2008, their um, most recent LP. Um, I will say that it's not my favorite sounding Cure record, um, especially the drum sound I'm not a big fan of, um, but I think this is easily the best bunch of songs that they've put out since Wish. Um, a lot of really good songs all over this thing. Um, Underneath the Stars, The Only One, The Reasons Why, Siren Song, The Real Snow White, The Perfect Boy, This, Here and Now With You. Just a really, really good uh, collection of songs. I'm um, not totally sure why people usually rank this so low. It may be um, the production um, keeps them from enjoying it um, as much, but I, I think the songs are strong enough to overcome that. All right, number four um, from 1989, the album Disintegration. Uh, so this is an album that a lot of people would put as their number one Cure record. It's pretty easy to see why. It's an extremely cohesive record, very focused work with amazing songs. Um, but to me, it stays a little uh, a little too long in one lane. Um, it's a kind of a long record. Um, it's an amazing record, but that, that's kind of my justification for why I have it at number four instead of up at the very top. Um, just a little, little too long and a little um, too much of one sound the whole time. Um, but Pictures of You, Love Song, Lullaby, Fascination Street, uh, the title track, Disintegration, uh, it's a great, great album. Um, it's kind of a marriage of their early goth records and the pop of their previous few records. Um, so for a lot of Cure fans, it kind of hits the sweet spot. Um, yeah, it's a great record, but I think they have a few that are better. Number three, uh, I have their double album from 1987, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. Uh, so it's a big, sprawling double album. Uh, very eclectic and covers a lot of ground. In some ways, it's the opposite of Disintegration. Um, it might be a little too long and maybe a few songs could have been cut, but that's kind of what I like about double albums a lot of the time. Um, it's just like all this different stuff that you get to dig through. Um, it's what makes albums like you know, the White Album or Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness so great. And Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me has some of my absolute favorite Cure songs on it. Um, 
Catch is probably in my top five favorite Cure songs. Why Can't I Be You is great. Um, of course, it has Just Like Heaven, One More Time, The Perfect Girl, A Thousand Hours. Just a, a great, great record with a lot of um, different sides of the band on display. All right, at number two, from 1992, the album Wish. Um, pretty much every song on this record is really good, as on Disintegration, but with but with a bit more variety. Um, from the exuberant pop of Friday I'm In Love to slower numbers like Trust. Um, not much more to say about it than that. It's just a, a really good set of songs with, with really good production. Um, favorite songs are High, Doing the Unstuck, Friday I'm In Love, and A Letter to Elise. And at number one, I have uh, their 1985 album, The Head on the Door. Um, to me, this is one of the best albums of the 80s. Um, they had been hinting at this side of themselves on pornography and the top, but on this album, they go uh, full in on, on pop. Um, it's a reinvention without really changing who they were. Um, they somehow found a way to be completely mainstream uh, while being true to, to themselves and to the sound they had established. Um, which is a, a pretty impossible feat for any established band to pull off. Um, aside from just being a very melodic record, um, there are so many new ideas all over this, um, from the Spanish-influenced acoustic guitar on The Blood, um, the flute on Six Different Ways, the funkiness of, of uh, Screw, the sax solo on A Night Like This, and of course, uh, Close to Me was so far removed from anything they had ever done before, and it's just a perfect song. Uh, favorite tracks on this are In Between Days, The Blood, Six Different Ways, Push, Close to Me, and A Night Like This. Um, it's a really great, great record um, by a really great band. And that is my listography of The Cure. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Hit the like button if you liked it. Hit the bell so you get notifications. And be sure to leave a comment below. Tell me what your favorite Cure albums are and how my list got it wrong.